reaction to the Brexit chaos and how economies might be impacted. I'm joined from Geneva via Skype by Dmitry Grozubinsky, an independent consultant on international trade and also a former negotiator for the Australian government at the World Trade Organization. Dmitry, very good afternoon to you. Um, well, good it's afternoon. chaos, isn't it? Uh, prospects of a no deal on the table, prospects of uh, delaying Article 50. What does a no deal mean for international trade, for international relations? Well, a no deal is an unwinding of decades of trade integration. Uh, the European project has been an attempt to essentially make trading between uh, Britain and France and Britain and the rest of Europe as easy as moving goods from Melbourne to Geelong, for example. And no deal unwinds that overnight. And businesses, almost dozens, hundreds and thousands of businesses have been set up to take advantage of that over the years. And this would overnight undo all of that and revert them to the absolute baselines of international trade. Um, so that could be potentially hugely disruptive in ways that we have spent years trying to understand and are only seeing the vague outlines of. Nothing like this has ever happened in, uh, in history. Um, uncharted waters, as you say. What does it mean outside of Europe, for economies, for business outside of Europe? Well, so the immediate effects would vary from, from economy to economy. But, for, for example, uh, many, many Australian businesses set up their headquarters in London uh, because it's an English-speaking, welcoming, pro-business city, and use that headquarters to trade into the EU. And they were able to do that because of the UK's relationship with the EU, that it was a single market. Now, in a no-deal Brexit, depending on the sector those businesses are in, that might no longer be possible. Those businesses may no longer have the right to offer certain services uh, into the European Union, and that could be potentially hugely disruptive to those business models. I wonder um, that's just one example. OK, yeah, I wonder, though, whether there would be advantages, too, for, for, for Australian businesses. Well, in the uh, in the immediate term, uh, I think you know there are always some minor advantages to chaos for the for the opportunistic. Um, so, so one example is that uh, UK uh, agricultural products would, uh, which have currently enjoy absolute tariff-free access into the European Union, would suddenly face the same kind of impact uh, import tariffs as those few countries with which the EU has no trade deals of any kind and to which it doesn't offer any preferential access. Mm. Uh, so, so one example is that UK lamb, which can currently be traded at a 0% tariff, tariff-free, um, would suddenly face a tariff that's roughly equivalent to 45%. It would no longer be competitive in the EU market. Um, now, that's a potential advantage for Australian producers. Um, even though we do trade under a quota that we generally fill. Around the world, Britain has um, historically been very powerful, considering its size, um, hugely influential around the, the Commonwealth and other nations, obviously. Um, in the light of what is happening, what is still happening there, does that power uh, that it wields diminish considerably? Uh, I think it's, it depends on your conception of power, of course, but... Uh, I think if you look at the way power relations exist in the world as they are, there are a couple of, I would say, superpowers, uh, in, whether you look at the US, China, and the European Union is one of those powers. Mm -hmm. Now, the UK outside of the European Union would not be an inconsiderable player on the world stage by any means, but speaking in terms of economic weight class, the EU, the UK by itself is simply no longer in that top tier of uh, of global uh, mega players, and that uh, and that carries consequences. Mm. Okay, um, you'll you'll know where I'm going with this, but the former Prime Minister Tony Abbott uh, uh, had something to say about Brexit and doesn't see what's wrong with a No Deal. Australia does business billions of dollars of business in trade with the EU without a deal. Uh, you were very quick to put him right on that. Tell us. Uh, <laughs> I think the uh, the former prime minister um, maybe uh, overstated the simplicity uh, of the matter. Um, the UK, as I said, has enjoys 40 years of integration with its nearest neighbours. That is an entirely different scenario 
to Australia trading with the EU as it always has from thousands of miles away using WTO terms. Um, the way I try to the, the way I try to explain it to people is that if you picture a car that's driving along on the highway uh, in top gear, that is that is the equivalent of what the UK had in terms of its trade facilitation with the EU. If it goes in a no-deal scenario, that car going at top speed suddenly shifts into first gear. That is a huge, huge shock to that car. Mm. Now, the car might still be functional, but it is now going much, much slower, and everybody in it has been very sharply jolted. By contrast, uh, Australia's trade with the EU built up over, um, built up over decades uh, and minor agreements has been cruising along in third, and I understand my former colleagues in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade are looking to sign an ambitious free trade agreement with the EU to hopefully bump it up into fourth or fifth. But that is a gradual process. It is not that abrupt shift. And that abrupt shift is exactly what the withdrawal agreement, which the Prime Minister has failed to pass, was supposed to avoid. It was supposed to provide a two-year period of cruising in sixth and working out how to get back down to something less okay. than that. Nice analogy. Dmitry Grzubinski, thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. A four-day search has